Klein Realty has been in the real estate business for over 25 years. Susie Klein is an authority in the Williamsburg Greenpoint area, or is it Williamsburg or Greenpoint? Let's go find out. So you've been in the business for 25 years, and when you first started, can you tell me what what was the neighborhood 25 years ago? What what uh what type of clients were in the neighborhood? Um, it was really basically a very this section was a very sleepy Polish and Italian section, and everybody had their turf, and most of the families had lived here since the families had immigrated from whatever country they came from. So it. It was very local and very small, and it was a place where you went to the Polish market and got your kielbasa, and went to the Italian market and got, you know, your braziol. Yeah, <laughs> all that stuff. It was, yeah, it was one of the nice things about it was it was so ethnic. When did you start to notice a change that the neighborhood was progressing to slowly becoming more popular? In 81, when I started with uh, Brahaki Real Estate on Noble Street in Greenpoint, that was the first time I did any real estate. We started advertising with the Village Voice in Manhattan, and we started bringing some people over. There were a few artists or sculptors around, but very, very few. And it was a time when the neighborhood was so unknown that if you got in a cab and said Greenpoint, the cabbie would ask you where it was. So that's how much it's changed. I started my own real estate firm in 1990 here on Metropolitan Avenue. The other thing was that New York was losing its industrial base and people who owned loft buildings had no tenants and they were still having to pay taxes and they were desperate. And people started moving in as uh, using the space as live lofts. You get a lot of stories about it, but actually it saved those owners. You know, and uh, thankfully the city sort of looked the other way. How long has your building been here, do you know? This building? Most of these buildings were built right after the Civil War. Really? That old? Yes. Wow. See, I always have this image that the Brooklyn's a little bit, a little bit younger than it is. But really, oh, after no. after the Civil War, we, I think we still have at least one original house from the 1600s here. Wow. I'm not sure if it's still here or now. I know there was a house called the Meserol House, and that went back to the original Dutch families, farm families. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Because mm -hmm. it seems, I mean, to me. The way the way neighborhoods are changing so much that it's hard to I can't really differentiate what's what's you know really old and what's not. I mean that's that's just that's a I can way remember it, when but. every public school over here was built at the time of the Civil War. Now I think we have a couple of schools maybe that are newer, but most of the buildings are still Civil War. Mm -hmm. Where do you see things going now as far as in terms of real estate? In, in this neighborhood, in Greenpoint and Williamsburg. Market I'm afraid dropping we'll off. lose our creative people. And the ethnic groups that we dealt with were always really interesting because you always had, in real estate, you always had a mixture of all these different attitudes. The whole time during the early 90s, we were getting people from all over the world here. And then after September 11th, that stopped. Just. I mean, they used to write up my real estate office in German magazines, Japanese magazines, newspapers. You'd walk in the office, it'd be Tibetan sitting in one corner, Japanese in another, and maybe yeah. somebody from Yugoslavia, you know. It was, it was really interesting. Now you're not seeing that mix anymore, and I kind of miss it. And where it's going, I'm afraid, is more on the boring side and less on the creative side. What are your favorite buildings in the neighborhood? My most favorite is probably the Russian Orthodox Church. I mean, that is really beautiful. And then, of course, Milton Street is adorable. And I, that's St. Anthony's Church at the end of it. I mean, that is a view. I have a lot of favorite buildings, but they don't even have names. Yeah, You know, just street corners. Yeah, there's a St. Elias or something in Greenpoint that I always liked. Um, the place that was a home, I believe, for um, sailors, widows, on the corner of Oak Street and Guernsey. Of course, all of Noble Street, I think, is cute. That, and I love the Domino Sugar Factory. Yeah. If you go by it in the summertime, it smells like just melting molasses because of all the, 
They leave all the windows open and all yeah. the sugar that's just yeah. been sitting there. It just smells like molasses. Really? Like, do you feel the way the neighborhood is going now? That it's getting more cool. anonymous. And you're going to have more people per square foot yard mile. And it's going to end up being more like Manhattan. Hopefully there'll be some saving graces. They aren't going to take a, you know, McCarran Park away. No. And our other little parks. I mean, that will save it. If they can keep park along the East River, that will be nice. So we're going to have a lot more people than we ever had to deal with before. And I hope the subways are ready. So exactly what area are we in? Well, if I have to confess it technically, I'm afraid we're in Greenpoint. Because we are north of Metropolitan Avenue. That's the dividing line of Metropolitan It always was, until people decided that Williamsburg was trendy. And then the Williamsburg boundaries, the next thing you knew, people who had only been here for two weeks are calling the north side Williamsburg. Well, it used to be part of Greenpoint, you know. And okay, now it's Williamsburg in this side, which we call the Italian section because that's what everybody always called it. But you can't advertise it as the Italian section. Somebody will say you're racist or sexist or who knows what. So, so we started to call this East Williamsburg sort of in self-defense because it had to be called something that you could put in the newspaper. But actually, it's Greenpoint. And people will argue with you, but you know, if you go straight east, you've got Greenpoint Hospital. You know, which is where two blocks from there is where Betty Smith grew up. The tree grows and grows. <laughs> Do you remember where Henry Miller lived? Because I knew he... I know, Fillmore Place. Do you know Al Capone came from here? Yes. What I have friends who tell me they can remember people kissing their grandfather's ring. There are layers and levels of stories that you could get into in this neighborhood that's just always interesting. And some of the real old timers around here can remember things like them driving the cattle down to Johnson Avenue, like on Kingsland Avenue or Humboldt Street. And um, I had a secretary, Eleanor, who remembered when her father owned one of the first cars in the neighborhood. And Lenny Pinto, who works for me now, can remember when his family used to keep the sick calves from the cattle drives. And Lenny's not that old. You know, this a lot has happened in a few years, actually, you know, in this area, in this country. A lot. So you, there's stories and stories and stories. Then you go into the houses and you can see the layers, you know. I remember going into a house last year or the year before and the wallpaper in the children's room was Hopalong Cassidy. I mean, you know. There's all kinds of things to enjoy in those old buildings. You just never know what you're going to find, you know, especially underneath the drop ceilings. Mm -hmm.